Hey everybody, um, me again. So I'm back for another module uh, of the review program. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about uh, module 5, which is uh, concerning clerical ability. So let's get started. Okay, um, two topics uh, that, may, that we're going to discuss and talk about. Um, we're going to be dealing with alphabetizing and uh, general information, but on clerical duties and responsibilities, which are, which are active, uh, actually fairly easy. No, um, I, I do believe that uh, information concerning clerical duties, uh, what the clerk does, or what, they, sorry, what the cleric does, no? Um, we have done this a lot of times, like, you know, answering emails, um, human relations being, uh, how do you respond to calls, you know, and how do you, uh, how do you um, establish rapport with people and all that stuff, you know? uh, what department is this, what department does this, and, and all these things. Um, so, clerical ability will, will, fare, will, will test you on your knowledge about these things. So um, that's it. So um, how do you prepare for the for this test? Uh, um, first, you beef up your stock knowledge. Again, since we have, since you know, we do this, or I mean, I do think, and I do hope that uh, most of you or all of you who are watching this already has an idea about clerical duties and responsibilities. Um, for this test, it's just a matter of beefing it up, no? Um, um, uh, you know, review yourself uh, uh, on the, uh, um, you know, duties of a cleric, no? Uh, just beef up your stock knowledge, keep learning things that concerns a cleric, and you're good to go. Um, if you are a working professional, right, pay attention to procedures, okay? Um, this may be company procedures, government procedures, etc. And you pay attention also to the designations, the officers in charge. So what does a manager do? What what is it? What does a CEO mean? Right? Chief executive officer. What about the chief financial officer? Um, uh, and and other more designations. Assistant manager, regional manager, and, and all these uh, designations. All right, and also clerical responsibilities like sending emails, um, using you know software, printing reports, uh, um, and identifying different types of documents, etc. Okay, and if you are an undergraduate, uh, learn as much as you can about clerical duties. That's simply it, right? Uh, but if you are an undergraduate, uh, I think there's really again. Um, Clerical duties, you even do as an undergrad with clerical duties often, right? You print out um, reports and papers you type, you use, you use software or you use, uh, you use programs, computer programs that are being used by clerks or clerics in, 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 in the professional world, no? So, okay, so you do that, all right? Okay, um... So let's quickly get on to a sample question uh, because this module is actually just, you know, it's fairly easy. It's quite easy. Um, we're just, but, we're just, but you know, we're going to review. Uh, we're going to try and uh, uh, see kung ano yung mga pwedeng lumabas or yung kung paano siya or how these problems, you know, um, show themselves in the civil service examination. So, okay, the first uh, question here is alphabetizing. I'm sure you know what alphabetizing means. It basically means you are putting these um, uh, files or names or whatever uh, documents no, na may mga label, no, you, put, you file them by order, okay? And how do you do that? Well, um, this... I am pretty sure this has been already taught to you in elementary or even in high school that where you want to file them, to file documents in order that 
documents that have labels, for example, you uh, order them. Uh, uh, sorry, you take note of the ano, the first letters of the words as lab that are labeled. No? So, for example, dito. So what you're going to do is you first check out the first letters of each word. Okay, so you have A, you have C, you have D, you have L. Once you do that, right, you just, uh, which whichever letter comes first is the first in the order. Okay, so that's, that's basically it. So in this case, right, um, since this letter A, A comes first, so this is your number one, right? And then letter C comes first, Ah, yeah, letter C comes first before D, definitely. So, three, and then, my three looks weird. Okay, three, that's better. And then uh, L will be the last letter. No? So, your answer here would be two, three. Is it even here? Two, three, oh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, this one, letter C is your answer. Okay, right. Next. Okay, oh, this is uh, interesting. Um, there are some cases where the first words of each of those uh, labels or, mar or yeah, labels you know, in a document or in a file somewhere, pare parehas yung starting, ano nila, starting words nila. In that case, just skip it out. Just skip. You know? Proceed to the... Um, the next uh, word, no, where they are different from each other. So since sec is, ano, um, you know, lahat sila may SEC period, you just skip that over. Don't mind them. Don't mind them. Okay? Ganon din sa ibang mga words, pag pare-parehas yan, kahit anong word pa yan, no? Um, when they all spell the same thing, you don't need to mind them. No? Okay. So now we go on to the next word, which has now um, different uh, letters. So again, we do the same thing. We look at the first letter of each word, right? So D R A V A. So number four is your number one. Number one is your number two. And number two is your number three. And number three is your number four. So the order would be four. One, two, three. Okay. Oh, here it is. Four, one, two, three. Okay. It's that simple, right? Let's go on. Oh, okay. Now, here is a bit of a tricky part in alphabetizing. Um, pansin nyo, there are now numbers. Numbers, numbers, and numbers. Even symbols. No? Okay, um, listen closely, all right? Take note of this very well. When you are filing or alphabetizing um, uh, labels that have numbers on them or titles that have numbers on them, what you do is you spell them out. You spell them. So in this case, 24 is not 24, but 24 is as in, spell them out, 24. I apologize for my handwriting. It's really terrible. Okay, that's how you do it. All right, lahat ng numbers na yan. Um, so, wh what about uh, kung merong symbol, like a plus sign? You spell it out as well. No? So, spell this out. Okay, this is 1 plus... Four. Okay, so that's how you do it. Oh, what about this? 1984. Again, you spell it out. Okay. Just spell it out, just like this. 19. Oh, we're starting. 84. Okay, there you go. And now, after that, just you go to the first letter of each um, word. No? So in this case, since we spell it out already, 
Now we can find the first letter of each of each. Oh no. We can now alphabetize. Or we can now alphabetize. So T. Let's change the letter. Color. So we now have T, N, O, and E. Okay? So obviously the first letter among all of these that should come first will be number three. Which is letter E. Next one would be number two. Right? Which is N. Okay, E, N, uh, what's next? Uh, o, and then letter T will be your final, uh, final letter. Right? So your answer would be letter A. Okay? Ganun lahat yan ha? Ganun lahat. So you spell them out. Kahit anong, let, uh, kahit anong number man yan, or kahit anong symbol. For example, kahit exclamation point yan, no? like, kahit lagyan natin ng... Uh, if there is a file na meron talagang or my hashtag na ganyan, no? the symbol or my exclamation point or my question mark, just spell it out or my asterisk, no? you spell it out. So this one becomes hashtag. Okay, this one becomes an asterisk. This one becomes uh, an exclamation point. Okay, I'm doing my best here. <laughs> okay, exclamation point. All right, and so yeah, that's it. If you encounter symbols, you just spell them out, and if you encounter numbers, just spell them out. Okay, that's all you need to know about the alphabetizing. Um, very basic, uh, very easy. Just, uh, uh, you know, you can practice din naman. You get yourself some problems and do your best na ano. Siguro what you can do here is, since it's fairly easy, no? since madali lang siya, try and uh, do them fast. Like, really fast. No? So, you practice. You practice that. Okay. Oh, okay. Now we're in clerical... Um, the part where we're supposed to review about clerical in, uh, um, information or, yeah, clerical information. So, uh, fairly simple questions such as these, which computer program should you go to if you want to send an email or software, I guess. Yeah, computer program or software should you go to if you want to send an email. If you want to send an email. Okay. Sorry about that, my cool lang. Okay, um... So, are you going to use Word? Um, definitely not. Excel? Nope. Outlook? Yes. Messenger? Nope. While Messenger, while you can use Messenger, you can use Messenger, it should not be, a Messenger is not an email, um, an emailing software. My, uh, Microsoft Outlook is the, is an official emailing software, not Messenger. So, you take note of that if you still don't know that no or I, oh, I hope you do okay so that's question number four okay uh five is an example of a hard copy document is a pdf file letter b company email c a printed business letter d a request letter stored in a flash drive okay so pdf file letter what is a hard copy anyway so um well, generally, the term is used to, you know, identify, like, a literal hard copy. No, uh, just basically a, yeah. Or, or, or in, in, in technical terms, siguro, in, it is often referred to as a printed, no? Printed copy as opposed to a... You know, file that is stored in a computer somewhere. So it's printed out. It's normally referred to as a, if someone tells you, no, I want a hard copy of this, it, they usually mean that they want a printed copy of this document. So if that is a printed copy, then it's definitely not a PDF file letter. No, since it is not printed, it is just a file, no? not a company email, definitely, because it is an email, an electronic mail. No? as distinguished from a 
mail, a normal mail, or a letter mail, a mail letter, <laughs> a mail letter, okay, um, and okay, letter C is, uh, well, now we know what the answer is, it's a printed business letter, C, a request letter that is stored in a flash drive, no, it's not, it is not yet a printed copy because it is still stored in the flash drive, okay, um, it's a flash drive, ha, huh? not not USB, yung mga ano, portable devices where you store files, those are called flash drives. They are not USBs, um, if, you, if you still don't know. Okay, just an FYI. <laughs> but it's a fairly common knowledge, so. Okay, next. Uh, okay, here, uh, in sending an email, what does CC stand for? So, meron doon, pag uh, gagawa kayo na email ninyo, Meron yung mga, meron dun sa, I think, sa baba nung ano, sa baba nung send, right, send to, ganyan, okay, and then sa baba nun, meron sa niya CC, okay, um, so what does the CC, or the term, or the, you know, the, yeah, the term CC in the email stand for copy furnish, carbon copy, client copy, copy set. What do you think? <laughs> so the answer here, you no, know, is ooh, carbon copy. Okay, it's not copy furnish, but we we mistakenly uh we mistakenly use copy furnish as a term for this, you no, know, but it's not you know technically copy furnish. Although the process is just like furnishing someone a copy, no. Uh, but it's not it's not what it stands for but the but the the action is literally furnishing a cop one someone a copy it's not client copy it's not copy sent it's carbon copy probably to make reference to the you know literal carbon copy that you print out somewhere i don't know what you call the printer the printer that prints out carbon copies siguro the most probably doon nanggaling yung reference na cc no CC sa email no carbon copy to this people and this people and this people and this people no? so again it's not copy furnish it's carbon copy okay right okay uh, how do you address a sitting judge during a courtroom session hmm uh, this should be fairly common knowledge na oh, it's definitely not your highness the judge is not a king or a, or or a queen no, uh, not your excellency. Uh, this is usually reserved to very high-ranking officials in the government, such as in the executive department, such as the president of the republic or the vice president of the republic. No, okay. Um, your honor is the correct answer here. Not, not even madam or sir. No, why? But bakit hindi? Kasi you are addressing a sitting judge during a courtroom session. Right? You, you are not to address them as sir or madam. Well, ideally, you don't address them as madam or sir habang nag habang nag session sila in a courtroom. Or habang nag hearing or habang nag trial You always address them as your honor. Okay? That's a general rule. So you, you remember that kapag when work in a court or wherever, or or a or a or a government place or a place where um, there are courts. Okay. Um. Which among the responses below is the best way to answer a phone call for the company? Um. Okay. Letter A. What's up, man? <laughs> okay. We're looking for the best way to answer a phone call for the company. Remember. You are uh, professionals answering a call for the company. Not you, not for you, but for the company. Okay, so, letter A, what's up, man? Letter B, hey, good morning. How can I help? Mm, slightly, um, parang, ano mo yun? Very casual. May hey nga, um, Pag maganto, you avoid yung mga casual uh, words such as hey, or uy, o mga ganun, no? <laughs> avoid those. So definitely not letter B. Okay, and mo of course definitely not letter C. Hello, kumain ka na ba? 
Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, you don't ask them questions like these. They're not your. Did you say Joa? Okay. Okay. Um, also, this is definitely letter D. Uh, this is um, usually how you do it is you you greet them. No, good morning. This is and and you introduce yourself. Right. This is Jim from sales. You know, you can even um, you introduce yourself, and if you want to, you can uh, inform them where or what your, what position mo or where you work at, which department you work at. No, um, bakakase minsan kapag tumatawag sila, um, they are asking for someone else that is from a different department. No, so you can help them. Uh, you can make their lives easier kapag you know. Uh, malaman nila na oh this person is from the human resources or this person is from sales this first person is from accounting or this person is from this office kanyan ganyan no so pwede yan this is uh, Jim or whatever your name is this is Jim from sales how may I help you okay so that's that's usually how you do it there are many I know but there are many there are various ways naman but generally uh, this is the I know, this is a general way of a proper greeting when you answer a phone call for the company. Okay? Okay. Alright, uh, number nine is yo, yo, sorry. Your coworker asks you to send her a soft copy of a report. Which do you send? Alright, so what is a soft copy? Generally, a soft copy is referred to as or referenced to as a file that is stored inside a computer. Okay, so pag sinabing soft copy, they're usually looking for the, ano, yung, yeah, basically yung computer file, or ano ba yung technical term, basta yung file na nasa computer. Okay, so definitely not a printed transcript because this is what you are, this is obviously your hard copy. Okay, um, and, and you definitely do not hand over your laptop. Okay, you're, you don't do that. Uh, pag may hinanap sa yung soft copy at kahit nandyan pa sa file mo yung laptop, do not hand over your laptop. Or the company laptop that is given to you. No? Kasi baka kung anong mangyari, di ba? Ikaw pa yung mananagot. So you take care of what your company belongings. Okay? Uh, a copy from a photocopier? Um, nope. Because a copy from a photocopier is a, is, is a hard copy. One that is in is physically that can be physically held. Pwede hawakan. So not letter C. Definitely letter E. A word document file. That is of course stored in the in the computer. Okay, so that's it. Um, question number ten, which is the final question. When the company asks for or you to submit your C V. What does CV stand for. So, RE, Curriculum Vitum, uh, letter B, Curriculum Virtue, letter C, Resume, letter D, Curriculum Vitae. So, well, we all know what this is. It's definitely not Vitum, not Virtue, but is it a resume? How do we distinguish a resume from a Curriculum Vitae? They're basically the same thing, but in a resume, this is a term often used in the nor in North America. Oh, that's a very horrible A. In North America. Okay. While curriculum vitae uh, is the term used in English outside of North America. So probably in Europe. Okay? So yeah, so take note of that difference when uh, but it's not really a big deal. It, they're basically the same thing. But uh, I guess if you, you know, find yourself abroad, if you are in the North America, you know, or you are in the United States of America, you, they usually use the term resume. But if you are in places outside of North America, they are going to use the word curriculum vitae, such as in England or in, in countries in Europe. No? So, okay, so that is the module, I guess. So that's the entire module. Um, again, uh, this section of the civil service exam can be fairly easy. So, what I advise you to do is, um, you 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 breeze past this, no? 
uh, kasi ano eh lahat or most of the questions that will be asked here apart from the alphabetizing section um, hopefully dapat uh, sa ngayon or ngayon pa lang ano na yan stock knowledge na yan or common knowledge na yan sa inyo no so just wag niyo lang kalimutan and then you take note of you know uh, you take note of uh, official mga mga terms so that you can properly use them such as this resume or curriculum vitae or um, or, or or the different kinds of computer softwares or an email or whatever that is part of clerical uh, duties okay so that's it i will see you in the final module again if there are any improvements you would like to suggest and any errors or mistakes that you find in this module please feel free to message the page moderator of Batas for Everyone and we will get right on it. Alright? Thanks for listening.